Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today I am elbow deep in 4.0 engines because I gotta pick one to go into Beach Jeep. Alright guys, so here we go. This is our first candidate. This is a 4.0 with about 225,000 miles on it. It was pulled from the original version of my Beach Jeep. And uh, I pulled this onto this slab about two years ago before we took it out. It had a really nasty lifter tick. Insert clip here. Yeah, this baby had a really bad ticking, knocking, grinding sound, whatever you want to call it, when I pulled it on the slab, took out this engine, and uh, it sat over here on my crates for about two years. Um, when I finally got to tearing it down, let me show you what I found. Whoops. If you could see this right in here, I noticed this immediately, right by cylinder three, Come on, baby. That was a nice chunk of my piston number three. Um, that was most likely causing that awful noise. This is all pounded and scratched and gouged. And uh, I'm guessing it did a little bit of damage in there. And that sucks. Uh, it is what it is. Let me see if I could get, uh, yeah, get you in there on cylinder three. Let's see. Yep, there we go. Right here. This piston has a nice chunk of metal sheared right off of it. So we are not going to use option number one out of the question. On to option number two. All right, so here is my 4.0 option number two. This was pulled from another 2001 XJ. This was my brother's XJ and it was in an accident. So I pulled this out, we scrapped the body, I saved the motor and it ran fine on the day of the accident and I really wanted to use this engine and the project Jeep that I was building. Um, unfortunately, uh, my projects got delayed, as you guys know, and this motor and trans, it sat here for four years. I think I pulled it in April, April 2016. So yeah, this sat for four years, and unfortunately, when it came time to mess with it and see what was going on with this engine, uh, I could not crank it over it. Dude. It was seized up really bad. I was putting a lot of weight on the harmonic balancer, which of course is not a good idea to do. You don't want to force anything, but um, I could not turn the crank. Um, the pistons were seized. So here is what I did to unseize that. All right, here we go. Here we got my head on the workbench. This is the passenger side of the motor, the back, the front valve cover on it um, so what I did to unseize the pistons that were stuck in the cylinders uh, here we go we just took out the uh, spark plugs all six spark plugs and I got some uh, deep creep penetrating oil and um, blasted it boom right down into the spark plug holes and uh, I literally used a whole bottle of this and then when I ran out of the uh, <laughs> seafoam deep creep I ended up getting some PB blast in there and if you are an impatient person, <laughs> it's not going to work because, uh, well, it took a long, long time. So after I put in all of that penetrating oil, I was trying to uh, crank on the harmonic balancer. Let me bring it back over here. So you're supposed to be able to give this a little bit of torque. You know, you want to go clockwise because if you go counterclockwise, you'll loosen up the bolt. And it was not budging just like you saw in that footage before. So uh, I had to pull the head. Uh, let me give you a tip on pulling the head. Here is a perfect example of a head bolt on a 4.0 because this is a head bolt on a 4.0 and this is a 13 millimeter 12 point deep dish and shoot man I did not have one. So you run to your Home Depot you get your very common half inch uh, universal deep dish and um, fits right on nice and snug and here we go. You're gonna want to take a breaker bar and uh, well for me you're going to do a half inch to um, three eighths conversion and you go ahead and you give this sucker 
all the torque you got. Um, it will free the bolts. It worked pretty good for me. I even did this on my little workspace over there. And uh, yeah, that is how I got my head off. And as you can see, the head is over here on the bench. And here's a horrible example of keeping your uh, bolts and your rods organized. Um, maybe do a nicer job than mine. I kind of know where they go, so, so I'll be all right. Um, again, here is the head on the bench. Uh, this is my tuppy head. It's my 0331 tuppy. And um, I'm gonna be reusing this one. We'll get to that probably in another video. But here we go. Onto the main prize is the engine block for uh, Beach Jeep. Now, here's what's going on with this one. Okay, so I got my head off and I revealed some pretty yucky stuff in here. <laughs> Wasn't that nice looking. But what do you expect for four years of sitting with uh, rain and the elements and oil goop and uh, antifreeze, all this crap was on here. And uh, I could not spin the harmonic balancer. So uh, here's how I freed it up, guys. And, and this works before you scream at me. Um, I couldn't do anything with a seized engine. So I might as well take a risk and try to free it up. Uh, I have a... Two, two inch, yeah, two inch piece of steel. This is a uh, fence post. Now this side is really nicely cut. Uh, this side is the side I was whacking with. So what I did was I came in with my flat side. I rested it nice and firm onto my piston and in cylinder one, gave it a whack, whack. Um, nice and gentle, I guess you could say. You wanna use finesse. You don't wanna really blast it, but I uh, gave it a nice firm tap making sure I kept continual pressure with my hands so nothing popped up and vibrated and I tried to keep it centered on each piston. Whack whack. Now this is a three pound sledge and um, did two, two from one through six, back six to one, back again for a second pass and on my second way down, cylinder three, pop pop, I felt it give and I saw a little movement on the, uh, all the pistons, so I knew my crank was free. And then what I did was I took my breaker bar with my 19 millimeter, and I was able to work it back and forth a little bit. A little left, a little right, keep moving. And then finally, I was able to free up the whole crankshaft, and every single piston, one through six, moved up and down really nice. Now that I got all my pistons freed up, gave some WD-40, wiped everything down real good, and every single cylinder, gave it a good cleaning, and I was able to rotate this again, and it was looking pretty good, except for where cylinder three was seized. Now, if you could come on in here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Right in this area, was where the rings were seized onto the cylinder. Um, this bore is still pretty smooth, but I could feel tiny microscopic valleys and pits in here. And I just took a little bit of sandpaper to get the rusted chunks off, a little bit of surface rust, and uh, lubed it with WD-40, and I kind of rubbed it down pretty smooth. And uh, everything works really nice. Here is cylinder four. And if you're looking for health of a cylinder, you can see it in the, uh, the honing. There's like hash lines that go up and down and like a little check pattern. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, that's what you want to see if you're going to reuse your uh, engine block without, without honing. You're going to want to see the old hone marks. And uh, they all have it, even this one that had a little bit of rust. So unfortunately, because cylinder three has that little bit of uh, unevenness in the walls of the cylinder, I'm not really confident in using this. Although all the other cylinders look really clean. Uh, again, this motor had like 135-ish thousand miles on it and I really wanted to use it, but um, I wanna just do a quick budget refresh on an engine when I put it in the beach deep, because that's a short-term goal is just getting something running long-term goal would be dropping in like a 4.7 stroker uh, so I don't want to go too much into any particular engine this time around I, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem but um, if there's a better option I want to use the best option so um, this 
could work. Still a little iffy on cylinder three. May not be a problem, um, but it may be a problem. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to get too much more into this block uh, because I'm going to check out engine three. <laughs> All right, guys, here is option three. This is a running 4.0. It has 180,000 miles on it, a little more, but we know it runs and drives. I actually drove it in a video a little while ago. So this is probably what I'm going to end up using. I'm going to use this block. Uh, right now, we're going to do a compression test. We're going to find out the actual health of the engine. Hopefully, everything is good. So when we tear this all down, we can put everything back the way it goes. Except for some few mods like uh, the head, we have to use the 0331 Tuppy head is a plan on running the coil packs and not the distributor. We'll get into that in another video. But right now, compression test, we're going to see exactly what's going on inside this thing. All right, to test the compression of this 4.0, we are going to use my, um, what is this? It's an Innova compression tester. This is model 3612, and it's got a bunch of different attachments. Um, so you could test uh, a bunch of different type uh, spark plug holes. So here we go. This is my uh, adapter I use for the 4.0. It just screws right on. You want to do everything hand tight. And uh, this is going to go into the spark plug holes. Actually, I'm going to pop this off first. There we go. And we're going to hand thread this into the spark plug holes. And then we're going to put on... The, uh, the gauge and then we're going to crank over the engine we'll go through all that in detail but this is a good idea it's it's going to let you know if it's uh it's got good compression or bad compression uh good compression that's what you want it'll let you know everything's good in there if you get bad compression it could be a number of different things you could have leaky intake valve leaky exhaust valve you could have a scored uh cylinder wall you could have a bad piston even a bad head gasket so uh you don't want <laughs> to have bad compression because uh, then you got to do some more diagnostics, but uh, good engine compression, you're good to go. I'll know that this engine is good to use, and then I could take this apart and put it all back together the way I want it. So, um, all right, let's get started. Let's, uh, let's go through step number one. All right, so here we go. First thing we're going to do before we start the test is we're going to get in here, start her up, and let it get up to operating temperature. Yeah, baby. Love this two-door. Now, it does have a couple squeaks in the belt. That's all right. And it is making a funny sound, which I believe is the... What is that? The steering pump. It's bad. But if you listen to this thing... I got no knocks, no ticks, no clanking sound. Everything coming from the engine is just beautiful. This is the sound I'm hearing. Pretty much the power steering uh, pump. But so far, sounds great. Uh, my initial reaction is going to be, you know, this is a pretty solid 4.0. Uh, the oil is clean. It's been clean when I got it. So um, I'm hoping it was a well-maintained vehicle. Look at that. That's brand new oil, guys. So, I'm just going to let this run a little bit. Going to let it warm up. And uh, we're also going to let the alternator charge the battery a little bit because we're going to be doing some cranking. And, uh, yeah, let's let this run for a little bit. There we go. Engine temp is getting up there. And here you can see 185,000 miles. So uh, that's why we're doing this compression test. There is a lot of miles on it, and uh, we want to make sure it's in good health when, uh, when or if we need to reuse it. So, all right, it is still running. It's up to temperature. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come around here to the fuse box, and we are going to look for the uh, fuel pump. There we go, fuel pump relay. I'm going to pull the fuel pump relay so I can get my hands in here. It's this ice cold AC line in my way. <laughs> Embarrassing. Oh, there we go. Well, there. Now there is no fuel in the system when we're going to do our compression test. Ugh. Come 
on. Yes! <laughs> all right, now that we got the engine all uh, fueled out, it is empty. We're gonna go through it and we're gonna pull all the plugs. Start with number one. And, you know, it's kind of warm in here now. So, yeah, don't burn yourself. I'm gonna pull the plugs and we're going to label them. I'm gonna go one through six and make sure whenever you're pulling a plug, you pull from this rubber boot as low as you can and you're not pulling on the wire. You don't want to rip your wire. Um, I guess if you're gonna do this and your compression is okay, let's go ahead and put on new, uh, new wires and new plugs. There we go, and the last wire. I am not gonna label because the other ones are labeled and that would be just stupid to put six on it. <laughs> I don't know. All right, now we're gonna take off the spark plugs. All right, for spark plug number one, I'm just going to uh, bungee this uh, radiator hose out of the way because it's annoying. That helps a little bit. This has got a lot of crap dangling in your way. So here we go. Uh, let me move you to where you can see. Okay, spark plug one. Sorry about the angle, guys. It is tough to see in here. Um, we're going to get down in here. This is a 5 8 I believe uh, Cherokee spark plugs are a 5 8 uh, deep dish socket. They're a special spark plug socket. They got that rubber uh, gasket in there. Helps you line it up real nice. So we're just going to go ahead and sink this on there nice and snug. And we're going to gently loosen up spark plug one. There we go. That was easy. Now, I like to just spin it by hand. It's actually quicker and should slide right out. All right, here's what we're working with. Not too bad of a spark plug, but all right, we're gonna take this out, and set it aside, and now we're just gonna go on order one through six, taking out all the spark plugs, and we're gonna line them up um, in the order of which they were removed so we don't get them mixed up, so we can return them to their rightful uh, cylinders. All right, guys, spark plugs are out. Pretty simple job and a 99 and older. Here they all are. They're not in bad shape. I'm going to give them a quick cleaning and uh, re-gap before I put them in. Uh, let me show you something else real quick. All right, here we go. Here is Black Beauty's engine, and here is the 2000 and 2001 head with the coil pack ignition system. Note there's no distributor there. We just have our uh, coil packs laying right here. And you're gonna have to remove the coil packs, which is no big deal. I think there's just four long bolts and then the plug for the coil pack. You're gonna have to remove the uh, coil pack rail to get into your spark plugs on the 2000 and 2001 if you want to do your spark plug change or compression test. So, uh, you know what? Maybe I'll make a spark plug change video for this vehicle. I don't think I've done that yet on this. My goodness. So, yeah, we'll do a spark plug video on that. I'll show you how to take off the coil packs. I love the coil packs. That is why whatever engine I'm going to use on Beach Jeep, I'm gonna use the Tuppy head, the 0331 head that will not crack. You could run your coil pack ignition system on them. Coil packs are so much better. Uh, they don't get water in them like a distributor. Uh, they're more reliable, they last longer, they spark hotter. Overall, better ignition system. Boom. All right, before I go any further, just got a little shop vac and I'm gonna just suck up any uh, foreign objects or debris that might fall into my cylinder head. So I'm just gonna, uh, Suck it out. There we go. Much better. Now I'm confident I'm not going to knock any junk back then into my spark plug holes. All right, without further ado, the compression test. So I got my adapter that fits the uh, Jeep 4.0. Um, if you're wondering, yes, uh, the Anova 3612 um, compression tester does fit fine in this head uh, it will not hit the pistons as it comes up in the cylinder this is safe to use so uh, i'll leave a link in the description below if you want to get the same one that i'm using today so i'm just going to lightly rest it where the spark plugs go and i'm going to hand tighten the uh 
compression test fitting into the uh, spark plug hole. There we go, uh, hand tight only. Now we're gonna put on our gauge. Okay, here we go. I will uh, rest this right over here and I will crank her over. All right, we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna want to use this with uh, open throttle. So gas pedal all the way to the floor, clutch and key. Three, four, five. Oh, look at that. We're teetering at about 160 PSI. Cylinder one, 160. Next, clutch and key. Three, four, five. Okay, see what we got. Do 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 do. Look at that, about 150 cylinder two. Note it. Sausage McMuffin. All right, guys, I'm just gonna keep on going down the line, and I will check back with all the results when I'm finished. All right guys, compression test is complete. So here are my results from cylinder one to six. We got 160, 150, 165, 165, 140, and 179. So what you gotta do is you're gonna take your highest number, you're gonna multiply it by 75%. So 180 times 0.75, it comes out to 135. Now my, lo my lowest compression is 140, so it's within the 75% range of the highest to lowest compression. So this is in good health. Uh, it's got great compression. I am going to use this block. I'm so excited. When I tear this down, I'm gonna put the engine back in with a Tuppy 0331 head. We're gonna do our coil pack ignition. We're gonna run our 2000, 2001 wire harness and 2000 computer. We're gonna put in our manual transmission with a, a bypass to the new sa neutral safety switch. Um, this is gonna be a great build. This is gonna be in my beach sheet build. So we still gotta take, take this to the chopper, cut this down, apply it to uh, the other half of beach Jeep that's waiting for it. And uh, I am so excited this build is gonna be underway. So uh, if there's anything you guys wanna see um, involving the deconstruction of a two door 4.0 Cherokee, let me know. I'm gonna start taking this thing apart and then uh, head this off to uh, Paul the Fabricator. So that's it guys, thank you for watching. I'm going to now uh, clean up these spark plugs. They look like they're in good health. Brush them down with a brass brush and then I'll regap them, put them in. I'll do a spark plug video for you guys another time. And that's it, get this thing back together so we could take it apart. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Thank you for watching, guys. Remember to like and subscribe. I will catch you guys on the next project. And peace.